Hi everybody, this is MPLS in a nutshell. Really what it is, it's layer three VPN solutions that leverage MPLS in a nutshell. In the past, we've had customers like this customer right here, customer A1, let's get a different color. Let's use blue for him. We have customer A, uh, customer A and he's got several sites. And so here's uh, site A2 over on the far left-hand side. And in the past, what would we do? We'd create virtual circuits for them using Frame Relay. We could do a similar functionality with ATM and basically do overlays. So we could actually have, for example, a Frame Relay circuit from the headquarters to the remote site like that. Well, what happens if they have another site? Well, we would add another frame relay circuit and another frame relay circuit and another frame relay circuit. And this overlay really doesn't scale very well. So a better solution that they came up with is MPLS layer three VPNs. Here's how they work. You've got customer A and customer A has, let's say the 10 network. 10.0.0.0. I know that's very creative, but that's the network they own, they are playing with, and they want to share that route with the far side. Instead of doing an overlay, what we do is we peer with the provider edge. So A1 right here does peering with PE3. Now that peering can be OSPF, it can be uh, EIGRP, it could be RIP, heaven forbid, it could also be BGP. So we basically peer between A1 and PE3 and we give him all of our routes. Now the game that PE3 is going to play is PE3 is going to assign this interface to a VRF. That's a virtual routing and forwarding table. Think of it as a VMware image of a routing table separate from the host. So you have the global routing table of PE3 and you have the VRF routing table that's just for the customer A, the blue customer. Those routes inside the VRF get put in a school bus. I'll draw one right here. So here's our school bus. Actually, it's not going to look like a school bus. Maybe it's going to be a minivan. I don't know. So you have this school bus and the routes are taken out of the VRF and put onto the school bus for transport across the rest of the provider network. Once that provider network on PE2, the school bus is over here on PE2, PE2 is going to take the routes off of the school bus and then it's going to exchange them with A2. So A2, for example, then maybe they're running um, RIP over here. So we're running RIP between the provider and A2. And what happens is PE2 will take the traffic or the routes off of the school bus and put them into the VRF for A2. So this interface also has a virtual routing and forwarding table. So the game goes like this. The route of 10 is actually advertised up to PE3. PE3 puts that, exports it out of the VRF and puts it onto the school bus. That school bus is multiple protocol BGP. So we actually have VPN V4 routes inside the school bus. PE2 is going to take those routes based on route targets and import them into the VRF that he's using for customer A2. And once he takes them and imports them into the VRF, they're then shared through that routing protocol associated with that VRF with A2. Now A2, if you look at the routing table, would have a RIP learned route for the 10 network. The actual routing protocols aren't too important. I mean, as far as here, we can mix and match, but that's the concept of MPLS. Now the beauty is, as we bring on more and more sites for customer A, we could put customer A3 right here, hang them off of PE1, and we could still simply pull off the routes and share the routes in this virtual private network for customer A. It's called private because it's kept isolated or private from customer B or customer C or anybody else. There's no encryption involved. The private part is simply the separation. So the whole game with MPLS VPN layer three solutions is having your customers neighbor up via their favorite routing protocol with the, the provider edge. The provider edge taking the routes out of the VRF, exporting them into the school bus, which is multiple protocol BGP, sharing those multiple protocol BGP routes with other routers, for example, PE3 and PE2, our internal BGP neighbors, and they're using VPN v4 capabilities, and that's how they share the routes back and forth. And then PE2 would take those routes, export them, uh, sorry, take them off of the school bus, import them into the VRF right here, at PE2 side for the VRF for that customer and share them on their way. 
that's the whole story. Really, there's nothing more to it. Actually, there's a whole world more to MPLS Layer 3 VPN solutions, and there's lots of great training out there on it. MPLS, as we get back to the topic and point, MPLS is used only right here. I'll do it in uh, green, uh, right here in the service provider network. And the benefit of the MPLS is so that we can label switch the top the top label for the traffic. Let me I got a few moments. Let me explain how that works. When these routes, let me use a different color. Uh, let me use uh, red. Uh, let me use pink. Okay. When customer A1 advertised the 10 network, it actually is sent to PE3, and because it's in this VRF, it actually gets assigned a VPN label. Let's call that VPN label 20. So PE3 knows that anytime it gets a packet for 20, it knows exactly where that goes. It goes down to A1. So that label is communicated on the control plane on the school bus. So the school bus, which is BGP, carries this VPN label for that network across as, a, as an attribute of the BGP update. When PE2 gets that, it will remember that to reach the 10 network, it is going to go ahead and use label 20 as an identifier for it. So then we have a happy user. The happy user right here sends a, tra a traffic to the 10 network. What PE2 is going to do, he's going to say, oh, the 20 network, that is the, should, I'm sorry, the 10 network, that's the 20 label. And it's all pre-calculated inside of Ceph. So it actually attaches the 20 label as the bottom label in this transit packet and this is okay great the 20 label is for the benefit of PE3 because when he sees that 20 label he'll know what to do with it but now I need to get the traffic over to PE3 so PE2 is going to have another label that identifies how to reach PE3 let's call that label 30 so what's going to happen is we're going to have an MPLS packet that's going to look like this it's going to have a layer 2 header whether it's you know HDLC for a frame relay whatever it is and then at layer two and a half so that's the fit one that's two we'll call this 2.5 we're gonna have and then we have IP below it we're gonna have two labels stuck right in there the bottom label the backmost label is gonna say label 20 that's for the benefit of PE3 and the top label is gonna say 30 that top label, as we forward it, is going to be received by this router right here. He's going to say, oh, that 30 label is how to reach PE3. He's going to swap out the 30, and in this case, it would be an implicit null, so he's going to actually pop off that label, and he's going to forward the packet to PE3, who will receive it with just the 20 label. PE3 receives it and says, oh, this transit packet is for the VPN tag of 20, and he knows how to forward that. So that's eight minutes. Everything you needed to know about multiple protocol label switching and layer three VPNs in under 10 minutes. I am just kidding. There's a whole world. It's actually very, very fascinating. And there's lots of great content out there, including Cisco's own documentation. So thanks for the request on an overview of MPLS. I may have overkilled that a little bit, but if you'd like me to focus on specific areas of it, let me know. I'd be happy to do it. Thanks everybody and have a great, great rest of the day.